gathered over a period of time over different periods of time i am gathering the observations for example i am gathering the stock price data stock price data probably at the end of every day so the collection the list of this stock price data collected over different periods of time probably in short represented with xt so it could be x1 at the end of first day the stock price could be x2 at the end of the second and so on it could be xn at the end of nth day so this entire collection x1 to xn in short represented by xt which could be either x1 x2 x3 so on xn where t is uh, uh, at different points in time which is uh, again t belongs to some time set called j so whenever we are defining a stochastic process we are simply talking about uh, some process xt means different values of a particular process like stock price or probably a, a state of health of a particular firm or health of a particular person individual so anything any observation which we are collecting over different points in time is what we are calling as a stochastic process so this can be represented as xt where t belongs to a time period j so this xt which are the different observations of our uh, uh, of our random variable we are here using the word random variable because xt can take different values on a random fashion so this set xt is what we are calling as the state space the different possible values which our random variable can take is what we are calling as a state space and this t which is uh, the different time points at which we are observing our random variable is called as time set or time domain right so that's the basic thing in stochastic process whenever with the on the contrary side i can talk about uh, a static process where i am observing one variable at a point in time one variable at a point in time at one point in time whereas when i am talking of stochastic i am looking at uh, the pattern over different points in time now this is where comes additional understanding with respect to the stochastic uh, processes whether the there exists any kind of dependency on the various variables that are captured at different points in time so is there any relationship between x1 x2 x3 so on xn are they interrelated or there is a lot of independence between them so it requires the, the study of a stochastic process requires a clear understanding of the various individual values it also necessitates us to understand the variances that are existing the deviations that are existing between the values and also some level of interrelationships that are existing something in the form of correlations or interrelationships that are existing between the variables between the various observations done at different points in time right 
So that is what uh, is the basic overview of the stochastic process. And just moving further, we would like to know as far as the stochastic processes are concerned, the first thing is the classification I do with the stochastic processes. What do I mean by the classification here? We are talking about two major elements here, the state space, the state space and the time domain. Now this is where we can talk about the state space being either continuous or discrete. And similarly, the time domain also could be either continuous or discrete. What do I mean by this? When I am talking about state space being discrete, it means that the possible values that could come for my random variable could be only a few. For example, I can look at the states only as integers. This, uh, in case of stock price, I talk about the state space is continuous because any price literally can come up. Now, need not be an integer, even it could be in terms of uh, decimals. So, the stock price can be more of a continuous state space. Whereas, when I talk about, let's say, number of defaults, number of defaults, it may be, it may not have 2.5 default, 3.2 default. It's a set of integers only. And that too, positive integers only. It may not take negative values. And where is a discrete set of values that could be taken by the random variable. So, wherever our variable can take uh, only a few set of values, we are associating it with a discrete state space. Wherever any possible value can be taken, we are associating it with the continuous state space. Similarly, when I am talking about the time domain, when the observations are made, at specific points in time. When the observation of the variable is done only at specific points in time. For example, at the end of every month, at the end of every year or on the 15th of particular month. So whenever I am observing the making an observations only at specific points in time, of that random variable, then we are saying that uh, the time domain is discrete. But if I see that observations can come at any point in time on a continuous basis, right? Probably, uh, the, let's say, if if I am noting, let's say I'm I'm noting out uh, the accidents that have occurred. I am observing the accidents that have occurred. The moment an accident is occurred, if I make an entry for it, it's like I am doing it on a continuous time basis. But all the accidents that have occurred during a particular month, I am recording them at the end of the month. This is where we are calling as the time domain is discrete. So, for our understanding of the stochastic processes, we look at different processes falling into different kinds of combinations. So, we can talk about a process which is discrete state space as well as discrete time or we can talk about uh, discrete state space but continuous time, continuous state space, discrete time, continuous state space, continuous time. We can see all possible